Why does Muay Thai dominate? No other stand-up martial art is as dominant as Muay Thai. They are in a class of their own when it comes to effectiveness. And as one would expect, the history of Muay Thai is as legendary as it comes. It is a martial art based purely on merit. Many of the top talents from Muay Thai can win kickboxing and boxing world championships. That makes many of the top Muay Thai talents free sport champions. So how is that possible? You see, Muay Thai fighters are the most battle tested athletes on earth, with many of them racking up to 400 fights throughout their career. Unlike the theoretical and untested martial arts like Wing Chun, the techniques in Muay Thai are entirely evidence based. That is, anything that does not work in a fight will not be trained. It completely embodies Bruce Lee's famous quote, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, add what is essentially your own. Now how exactly did this legendary style come to be so dominant? Is it the hundreds of fights they take throughout their career? or the flow sparring that they do so beautifully. Fight fans, welcome back to another episode of Lawrence Kinchin's Striking Breakdowns. In this episode, we explore the legendary Muay Thai style and why it still dominates today. To understand why Muay Thai is so effective, we must go back in history to examine the origin. Muay Thai is the national sport and ancient cultural martial art of Thailand. It originated from Muay Buran, taught as a form of self-defense when a soldier lost his weapon on the battlefield. Muay Buran is partially credited in Thailand being the only country that never got colonized. In the early 1700s, under the reign of King Prat Chao Sua, Muay Thai became a sport outside of the army. During times of peace, soldiers stayed busy by training Muay Thai. At the time, there were no rules. People just fought each other until someone was left standing. No rounds, no time limit, and rarely a referee. It was MMA before MMA. This eventually gave birth to the legend of Nike and Dom. In 1774, after the Burmese invasion in the Ayutthaya Kingdom, a man named Nike and Dom was captured as one of the thousands of Thai prisoners being held by the Burmese King Mangrat. A festival for their victory was being held and the Burmese King wanted to see if the style of Muay Brown held up against his native Burmese boxing art called Lefwe. Nai Kanomthom was chosen to face the champion of the Burmese kingdom and proceeded to knock him out after he performed the ritual of the white crew. The referee claimed the win was not valid because the Burmese champion was distracted by the music. The Burmese king then sent nine other fighters out to face Nai, one by one without time breaks between the fights. Using the art of eight limbs, they were all put on the ground by the hands, knees, kicks and elbows of Nai Kanomthom. Impressed by these abilities, King Mangra said, every part of the Siamese is blessed with venom. He then granted Nai Kanomthom and all of his Thai prisoners of war freedom. This day is celebrated every year in Thailand on March 17th, known as the Muay Thai Day. This legend kept the tradition of training Muay Buran and Muay Thai alive. By the 19th century, Muay Thai became more formalized and recognizable as the sport we know today. In 1920, rules were put into place. Fighters now had to fight in a ring, wear modern gloves and groin protectors. Referees were introduced and rounds were timed. By the 1980s and 90s, Muay Thai entered its golden era. Hundreds of thousands of fighters across the country aspired to become champions. Gambling was legalized inside the famous stadiums and fighters got fight purses that are still unmatched to this day. When elite Muay Thai fighters went abroad to compete in kickboxing, several of them dominated the competition. One of them was named Boakao. Boakao's dominance in K1 ushered a new era of martial artists going to Thailand to train Muay Thai. Today, the techniques in Muay Thai are widely used in kickboxing and MMA. It is inseparable from the legendary development of full contact combat sports. Now, why exactly is Muay Thai so dominant? In one word, it's experience. Thai fighters start training early, some as early as five and some later at 12 years old. Those who start at 12 to 15 are considered late by Thai standards. By the time a Thai fighter is an adult in the elite stadium circuit, he will have more than 100 fights. Because they fight almost every week, they do not need to spar hard like their Dutch counterparts. Flow sparring is their main way to spar, where they can hit to the body with moderate intensity, 
but go relatively light to the head. This allows them to train over 6 hours per day and acquire any skill they wish to master. The diversity of weapons combined with training and fighting since youth allows a constant evolution of adapting what works and eliminating what doesn't. A professional Muay Thai fighter is completely dedicated towards training since they were young. On top of that, they had equally dedicated trainers and training partners. This is simply a luxury that their Western counterparts do not have. Although they lack resources to afford equipment, nutrition and sports science, they more than make up for it with the amount of time they trained since an early age. Each champion has been filtered out from hundreds of thousands of fighters attempting to get to the top each year. The other reason is unrivaled motivation. In Thailand, Muay Thai usually attracts the poorest demographic, providing a way upward to feed themselves and their families. This means that each fight is about survival. But beyond that, Muay Thai naturally allows evolution and diversity. The art of eight limbs allows attacks from not only punches and kicks, but also knees and elbows. They also allow the clinch, which is essentially Greco-Roman wrestling. This is something kickboxing does not allow, because if and when they did, Muay Thai fighters would completely dominate the fight. Like every martial art, there are different styles within the art. However, in Muay Thai, there are even more styles than other arts due to the diversity of weapons. There are punches, kickers, elbow specialists, and clinch and knee specialists. There are also forward moving and backward moving fighters. Many fighters are rigid, but some are also very evasive. The combination of being technical and powerful allows a Muay Thai fighter to successfully transition into kickboxing and boxing. If they are not that powerful, then their fight IQ would need to be off the charts like Somlak Kamsing and Samar Payakarun in order to transition well into boxing. From the 1960s to the early 2010s, Muay Thai camps produced over 50 world champions in boxing. Not only did the majority of these 50 champions capture titles within Muay Thai, they were able to transition into boxing and capture the most prestigious world titles. This is a true testament to the Thai athletes and bare bone training methods. Thai fighters like Bo Khao, Ped Panam Rung, Siti Chai, and now Superbon have all dominated kickboxing. This is highlighted even more so by how all of them were only near the top of Muay Thai. That is, none of them are considered the cream of the crop. But why is it that they do so well? All of them possess a spectacular left kick and a very well-rounded game. They can all punch, kick and knee at a high pace. Being able to have a high output with great technique allows them to buffer the very athletic fighters in kickboxing. Against all of their opponents, they have better roundhouses, push kicks and knees. On top of that, they usually have better defense and vision. This does not mean that they always win, but it does mean that many top Muay Thai fighters can absolutely dominate kickboxing. Distance, rhythm and timing control in Muay Thai is the best you'll see in any of the stand-up martial arts. One can simply look at Sanchai and understand why. Throughout his career, he has barely been hit. So why could Thai fighters dominate Muay Thai, kickboxing and boxing, but not MMA? The truth is that the time is coming soon. Until recently, Thai fighters did not have access to high level coaches in wrestling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But now that has changed, and the next wave of fighters will showcase how stacked the Thai talent is. Technician fighters like Sanchai, Nong Oh and Superborn would have the easiest transition into MMA. Not only can they control the range like no one else, they are very well rounded in every other area. The ability to clinch allows Muay Thai fighters to transition into grappling arts. Some of the best wrestlers in the world are amazed at how good Muay Thai champions can do Greco-Roman style wrestling. Yes, it could be said that Muay Thai isn't a complete martial art because it doesn't have any ground game, but it is certainly the most complete martial art for stand-up striking, completely unmatched by any other style. What do you think of the Muay Thai style and how they train? Do you think they will dominate MMA soon? Let us know in the comment section. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please support us by watching another one. I'm Lawrence Kenshin, and thank you for keeping our channel alive.